Hey guys, welcome back to Spark Gap Garage. My name is Nick. Uh, today we are working on my 2008 Chrysler 300C. We are going to be bleeding the brakes, finally, finally. Um, basically, replace the front calipers because of some damage that happened last season during the race season. Now, we're actually gonna get into the process of how to bleed your brakes, flush your brakes, kind of doing both because the back two are okay but the brake fluid is kind of, you know. Now the fronts, uh, front two calipers had to be replaced, so now there's air in the lines and you get it. So this is gonna be a step-by-step uh, step -step video on how to not die when you, um, kidding, when you um, bleed your brakes, how to do it correctly. Uh, this is the one-man method because I don't have friends. Kidding, I do have friends, they're all busy. Um, very basic, very easy, uh, very minimal amount of tools. Realistically, if you're uh, not me, uh, you could probably get her done in, I wouldn't even say half an hour, especially if you're just flushing brakes, not even half an hour. Bleeding them, 10, 15 minutes, I don't know. But uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay guys, so to start off, here's some basic tools that you'll need. Um, if you're doing a flush, a brake fluid flush, then you would use this. It's basically like a turkey baster. Um, this is gonna go into the master um, master cylinder to get all the old brake fluid out as much as you can, and then you'll replenish that amount with some new, you know, nice new clean brake fluid. So a little turkey baster or some way to get that old fluid out. Uh, for cracking the uh, bleeder screws on your calipers, you're gonna use a 10 millimeter wrench. Now, for my car, it is a 10 millimeter wrench. Uh, it may vary per vehicle, but every vehicle I've worked on, it's been a 10 millimeter. Um, yep. So then something else, if you're doing it single, get a nice cleaned out bottle. Don't have any leftover residue. This is a pop bottle, I cleaned it out very good. Uh, what the fluid that you see in here is my new brake fluid. Now this is a race car. The brake fluid is going to be different, so like .3, .4 um, race, uh, brake fluid. Uh, I'm actually using race fluid, so it doesn't matter. The process is going to be the same. But basically, once you get a nice clean container, if you're doing this by yourself, uh, you're going to drill a hole that is going to have your fuel line um, that you need to get. And basically, it needs to be snug. The uh, inner diameter here needs to be snug around the uh, the bleeder screw and I'll show this in a second here but basically this is gonna fit over the bleeder screw you're gonna crack it open apply the brakes and just basically act as if you're pressing the brake pedal and um, what that's gonna do is push the brake fluid out so this is actually gonna sit in there just like so if I can function today there we go and you want I don't know if you can see that you want the hose this fuel line just like basically below the line of the fluid. And what that's gonna allow is the brake fluid in your car to go into this bottle, the old brake fluid, but not let air back. So it's kind of cool where you don't have to have a fancy machine to do this, you can do it on your own. But uh, that's what this is for. And then of course you're gonna want your brake fluid. Again, I'm using racing brake fluid. So. Now that you uh, got all your tools and stuff, um, something else you might wanna have, now that I just remembered, is probably uh, a catch pan of sorts. So, you know, it could be uh, something to, uh, like Tupperware. I got a couple of catch pans off to the side, uh, I read out of camera view. But uh, once you get that, then these are basically all the tools you'll need. Um, you'll figure it out as you go. It's uh, pretty common for all this. Now, I'm gonna bring you in here. Okay, so this is a very crude diagram of a car. You got the front end here, and you got the right front tire, left front tire, right rear tire, left rear tire. Now you wanna locate basically where your uh, reservoir is, which would be for Chrysler 300s. Your reservoir is going to be down there. That yellow cap is your reservoir for your brake, your brake reservoir. Okay, so now the other thing you want to look for is your ABS module. Basically, that's uh, a box that all your brake lines feed into. And, well, 
it, it basically disperses all your brake fluid evenly throughout the vehicle. And uh, your ABS module is actually what allows your car to not uh, lock up the wheels. It uh, basically pulsates your car if you're in like a sliding situation. But anyway, that's a different story. Um, but for my case, Chrysler 300 here, that's it right there. You see all the hoses coming out just beside the window washer fluid reservoir. This guy right here, right there. Once you guys locate all of your items, now you are ready to begin um, your process. Okay guys, so the very first place I like to start um, that I recommend is your master cylinder here. That is the reservoir that holds all your brake fluid, goes to your brake booster and all that good stuff. Now, what you wanna do is take your fancy uh, turkey baster that you know you base turkey with. Um, yep, so what you're gonna do is suck out as much fluid as you can out of this reservoir. Now, do not Try to get it on your paint. It is acidic, it'll eat the paint, and you're not gonna be happy with me. So, something else. Just get as much out as you can. Oh yeah, that's nice and juicy. And all I'm doing, ooh, that's pretty cruddy. Um, Basically what I'm doing is getting her, her, the fluid into a catch pan. Now, the reason I'm doing this is um, because racing, it gets the brake fluid pretty hot and with heat, you know, heating, cooling, heating, cooling creates moisture. And if you can imagine moisture or water, basically water, dilutes down your brake fluid and then you're not going to get as good of a performance out of your brake fluid. Now, if you can imagine with racing brake fluid, that's very bad. Now, you uh, you can change your brake fluid based off of color. If it's like a dark, dark color, uh, smells burnt, uh, looks kind of watery. I mean, it's going to be liquidy, uh, but if it looks like water, then I would change out and flush out your system, which is pretty much what I'm doing and that's this is going to be your method that you're going to do. So now you took out a bunch of old brake fluid. Now what you want to do is fill it with brand new brake fluid, which is what I'm going to do right now. So like I said before, doesn't matter what brake fluid you're using, it's the same same process, same 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 process. Now with your with mine, it's kind of tucked in and depending on how confident you are with pouring it, uh, I would recommend using a funnel, but I'm gonna make a mess for you guys like that. I'm not lying, I just made a mess. Nice. Don't be like me. Okay guys, so now I'm at the left side rear uh, caliper. This is my caliper. Yes, I am a hot boy. Apparently I like to paint my calipers, uh, you know, hot boy red. Uh, Anyway, you want to locate your bleeder screw. Here, I'll take my flashlight. Your bleeder screw, all that is is like a little nipple looking thing. It might have this cover on it like mine, but that's it right here at the top. Take your 10 millimeter wrench and you wanna make sure you can crack this open. Um, probably one of the first things I like to do uh, besides you know setting up and this and that is uh, making sure these guys are um, able to open and close. If you cannot open them, you're going to have to either replace your bleeder, bleeder screw here. It can be a pain in the, you know, pain in the butt or just go ahead and replace your caliper. Sometimes it's just worth replacing your entire caliper. So now that you're situated, well, my light just turned off. Okay. Now that you're situated, basically what you want is your hose to fit over, and this is gonna be kind of snug, guys, and you want it snug, just over your thing, you're gonna get your wrench and you're gonna crack it open. Let's see if I can, 
make a mess. And this is probably where you want a uh, catch pan underneath. Cool, I'm not seeing anything. You don't need to go as far as I did. Just enough to, just enough to open. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is press down on the brake pedal a couple of times, and then we should start to see some uh, brake fluid coming out and bubbles and stuff. Now, like me, I just replaced my front calipers. This is gonna be the after video to that, or the, uh, the uh, you know, the post or whatever it's called. Anyway, the video right after I replaced both of my front calipers, so now I gotta blew the brakes. This is that. Uh, so when you press the brake pedal, it's gonna probably or most likely go to the floor and that's normal, that's fine. But that's what I'm gonna do right now. Have this opened up just a hair. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, press the brake pedal. It's not fast movement for pressing the brake pedal. Slowly press it down. Okay guys, so we're back. I got my brake bottle, fluid bottle thing, bottle, yeah. Where the hose is up and above the caliper, that way the air, uh, air rises. So it's gonna go up and get trapped in the hose and not go back into the caliper. So we're gonna continue on with this process. Crack my brakes. And if you're, uh, if you're bleeding your brakes, um, just basically going until you stop seeing air for that uh, brake line or your caliper. Once you see the bubbles and stuff stop coming out of your, uh, or in your hose, that's done. That, that wheel is done. Move on to the next one in the, the order or sequence, whatever you wanna call it. Now, if you're flushing, basically what you wanna see is you'll have dirty fluid, which is gonna be darker than clean fluid most of the time. Once you see that clean fluid coming out in your hose, excuse me, then uh, you're done. Now, I'm gonna be here for a little bit, so I'm not gonna film that entire process. You kinda get the idea of what's going on here. Um, again, if you're just bleeding your brakes, you're just gonna wait to, uh, wait to see the bubbles are coming out. And as you're pressing the brake pedal and checking, braking, checking, checking, braking, uh, make sure you uh, keep your brake fluid level in that reservoir up. Don't let it drain down, otherwise you gotta restart, and that's not fun. So uh, I'm gonna finish this wheel and then uh, the, the, really it's pretty much the same thing per wheel. I'm gonna finish up this wheel and then I'll go to the passenger side. Um, actually, you know what, I'll, do, I'll finish up the back here and then I'll go to the front calipers. It's really the same thing, but yeah, I'll bring you back when you get to the front, I right, guess. Okay guys, so we're set up. I got my fuel line onto that bleeder screw right there. You probably blinding you. Um, yeah, basically the hose, hose? The fuel line fits snugly over. And I got my setup going. So now, put the tripod back down. Where we can share the welt. I got my 10 millimeter uh, wrench ready. And now, what we're gonna do is crack this one open, which it's already pretty loose, so I like it about there. Uh, not too loose, obviously, to where it's gonna fly out. Uh, the fluid's gonna fly out around that fitting, but uh, like that. And now I'm gonna press the brake pedal a couple times. One, two, three, four, five. I like to do it about five times. Go back to your fuel line. And what we're looking at is your fuel line. I can see all this brake fluid in there. That's nice. I'm looking for any bubbles. Take a flashlight. And I can see some bubblage in there, which is cool. That's exactly what I wanna see. It's basically just little bubbles trapped throughout and that's all the bubbles through the brake lines going up to your reservoir. Now, what you wanna do is take a look at your fluid level, tap it off as needed, and continue this process until you don't see any more bubbles in your uh, fuel line. And then once that's done, you're done with this side, tighten up your uh, bleeder screw, 
move on to the last side, uh, which is gonna be the right side front, which is also the closest to my ABS module. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go back and press the brake a couple more times. I do about five pumps, slow, one, two, three, four, five. Go back to my guy over here. I'm taking a look at this fluid and it's kinda, kinda gross looking. And I'm not seeing any bubbles, which is awesome. Sweet. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this guy up just a snug. Just a snug. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do is press the brake pedal one last time from this side and just see how stiff it is. Oh yeah. You shouldn't feel, when you press the brake pedal when you're done, and I'll explain this a little bit later, uh, you shouldn't feel any spongy and I'll show you what that means. Um, in a sec. So now I'm actually pretty happy with this uh, front left side. I'm going to go ahead and do the front right side. And then after I do that, then uh, we'll come back and uh, talk um, about basically a brief overview of what we've done. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, guys. So now that we um, just finished the right side front, now, what I like to do is go back through each of the uh, the calipers, make sure the bleeders are tightened up, not like wrenched on, wrenched on, but like snugged up. And then uh, press the brake pedal a couple of times, check for leaks. Now, what I meant by spongy is when you press the brake pedal, you want it firm. It'll get to a certain point, and that's just the caliper pistons moving out, uh, taking up any gap and stuff when you release the brake pedal. Um, spongy is just how it sounds when you press the brake pedal. It kind of feels like, eh, I don't want to, um, where if it's nice and hard, guess what? You're going to have better performance out of your brakes. You're, uh, you're not going to feel like, oh my God, I'm going to die as you come up to a red light and then run people over because you didn't bleed your brakes right. So if your brakes are spongy, probably not a bad idea to maybe take a look at, uh, uh, I mean, go, go through your brake lines. Are there any uh, leaks? Um, your reservoir, your ABS module, just go through it make sure there's no leaks. Um, maybe, I, I would probably uh, recommend maybe bleed it one more time. A lot of times uh, this method won't get like every single little drop of air over time as you drive, it's gonna, you know, self bleed itself out, which is kind of nice. But um, as you go down the road, it will um, self bleed. But if it's spongy, then I would recommend re bleeding uh, your, your, um, your brakes. Um, so my, my brake pedal is actually pretty firm. It'll get to a certain point and it's solid, it's stiff. And that's perfect because guess what? I'm a racer. I don't want to die. So, yep. Uh, to go along with going through, uh, you know, back around, uh, making sure everything's tightened up. Obviously, check your brake fluid. Make sure your brake fluid is uh, back to the normal area on your reservoir. And, uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. Check for leaks, fluid level, tightness good to go. So, all right, guys, I hope you like this video. If you do like this video, please throw me a thumbs up, uh, like, subscribe, uh, comments. If you got any other, uh, you know, questions, I will answer them. Uh, if you have any ideas, you know, as far as maybe content for the car, the race car, shoot it my way. I don't care. Um, I got some badass con uh, content coming out, uh, going to come out. Um, I'm going to be installing a full racing seat. Um, yeah, Sparko, cause I'm one of them hot boys now, <laughs> now, um, six point harness, um, everything, everything is coming out. I'm going to take the uh, sunroof out of the car. So yeah, if you guys like this video, all right guys, we'll see you in the next video.